everyone. This is the last lecture of this week. Uh, what we have done so far is we discussed what is the underlying philosophy of uh, matrix method of structural analysis and in this week we demonstrated that philosophy through an example of truss. Uh, now here what we have seen is suppose a truss is given to us then we have to first uh, divide the truss into its elements, into its members and then write the force displacement relation for each member. When we write force displacement relation, we need the stiffness of each member. So, the first is to construct the stiffness matrices for each member which are called element stiffness matrices. Now, once we have the element stiffness matrices for all the members, then we have to assemble them, uh, all the matrices to get the global stiffness matrix of the entire structure. Now, once we have the global stiffness matrix, then apply the boundary conditions, whatever information we have about the problem in terms of boundary condition, in terms of nodal loads, we have to substitute that information in that for global force displacement relation and then calculate the unknown displacements and subsequently the member forces. So, we have demonstrated this in the last four classes, we have demonstrated these steps through an example. Today, we will just do the similar exercise, uh, summarize the entire steps uh, through one more example. Uh, the last example that we took is was statically determinate truss. Here we take an example for statically indeterminate truss and summarize all the steps through solution of that indeterminate truss. So, today's topic is again the matrix method of analysis of trust with one more example. So, let us take this example. So, uh, you can say that uh, you are number of number of unknowns we have in this case is uh, two hinge joints and then one roller joints. So, two hinge joints gives four uh, reactions and one wall roller joint gives another one. So, total five reactions we have and then we have uh, six members in the beam. So, 5 plus 6, 11 unknown we have and the number of joints we have 4. So, 4 joints give us 2 into 4, 8 equations. So, 8 equation, 11 unknown. So, this is an indeterminate truss. Now, please note that this is these two members, this member and the, these two diagonal members, they are not connected with each other. That the middle, this is not the connection. Okay. So, it has only the, these 4 joints. So, now, let us try to analyze this structure through matrix method of structural analysis. If you recall the first thing is we have to uh, we have to in order to identify these nodes and the elements we have to give them some numbers. Okay. So, first remove all the support and the forces on the member and then uh, these are the numbers that we give for the members. So, here 6 members in this case numbering is given as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, 5, 6 are the diagonal members. Now, similar to the members, we have to give numbering for the uh, nodes. So, these are the node numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, at every node, we have 2 degrees of freedom. So, degrees of freedoms are also need to be numbered. For instance, suppose node 1, we have 2 degrees of freedom. One is horizontal displacement and the vertical displacement. Say, horizontal displacement is uh, displacement E1, E1 and this is u2. Similarly, node number 2 horizontal displacement is u3 and u4 and node number 3 horizontal displacement is u5 and then u6 and then last node number 4 horizontal displacement is u7 and u8 vertical displacement. So, total 8 displacements we have and those displacements are can be written in a vector form as u1, u2, u3, u4, u5, u6, u7, <coughs> u8. These are for uh, 8 displacements. Then out of 8 displacements, we can say that u5, u6, u7, u8 and u4, they are 0. We will come to this point when we enforce the boundary conditions. It is just the numbering of the degrees of freedoms, nodes and the members. Okay. Now, once we have numbered all member nodes and associated degrees of freedom, now, next what we have to do is we have to now break all these, all these we have to take every member separately, all members separately and write down their stiffness, the expression for the stiffness matrix. Now, if you recall, uh, if you recall that if we take any member, uh, suppose which is connecting between i and jth node and the member is say represented as m 
and which has degrees of freedom i1, i2 and j1, j2 at the jth node and i1, i2 at the ith node, then this member stiffness matrix can be expressed as this, where the lambda x and lambda y gives you the information how this, what is the orientation of this member, what is the, uh, what is the, uh, how it is oriented with respect to horizontal x uh, axis and how it is oriented with respect to y axis. So, lambda x and lambda y are defined as this. Um, that we have discussed in, in first lecture of this week. Okay. Now, so what we do next is, this is for any arbitrary member M. Now, we apply this same thing for every member. So, in order to do that, we have to find out what are the lambda x, lambda y uh, for different members. Okay. Now, suppose for all the members, A e is constant. The cross-section and area in Young's modulus is same for all members, but uh, length is not same for different members. This is 5 meter, 5 meter, 5 meter, 5 meter and the diagonals become 5 root 2. Now, you see though these angles, these angles are 45 degree, no. these are angles, these are 45 degree angle, right? This is 45 degree angle. So, now for each member, if we write an ij at this, each, this is very important, how you are, how you are connecting, uh, how you are, the member number is fine, but Another important thing how this member, uh, the member is always between two nodes, right? How it is, what is the order we are representing that node, uh, the connected, uh, the connecting nodes. For instance, if you take, if you take member number 1, then member number 1 is connecting between 2 and 1. So, for us in this case, we take i is equal to 2 and j is equal to 1. You can, you could take i is equal to 1 and j is equal to 2 means you can go in this direction as well, but whatever way you go, whatever way you number to start with, we will discuss what is the most efficient way of numbering uh, these members and the node numbers at the seventh week when we do, when we discuss about implementation issues. Let us not bother about that issues right now. So, you can, you can, you can represent, you can, you can use the connection of member 1 either 2, 1 or 1, 2 that is up to you, but based on that connection, we have to define the angle. For instance, if we take member number 1 and this is connecting like this, we are going in this direction, 2, 1, then the angle is the theta becomes 0 degree. But again, if you make 1, 2, 1, 2 means you go in this direction, so this angle becomes theta, the theta becomes 180 degree. So, any orientation you go, but whatever way you define that orientation, you have to consider theta accordingly. So, in this case, uh, suppose member 1 is oriented as 2, 1, i is 1, j is, uh, i is 2 and j is 1, member 2, member 2 is this one, this one we take in this direction like this. So, we can take this angle as theta which is 90 degree, but if you take in this direction, if you go from this direction means if we take that i is equal to 1 and j is equal to uh, j is equal to 4 means you are going in this direction. In that case, we have to take this as theta. Okay. So, in this, but we have taken since 4 to 1 in this direction, our theta becomes 90 degree. So, similarly, member number 3, member number 4, member number 5 and 6, we can define this, uh, this is the way. But as I just, just now said, it is not, uh, it is not compulsory that you have to choose i and j like this only. It is just for demonstration, you can take i and j just reverse order as well or the mixed order as well, that is up to you. But whatever way we define, we have to define, we have to take the angle accordingly. Now, once we have taken this i and j, next is calculation of lambda x and lambda y, which is straightforward. Uh, so, these are the corresponding lambda x and lambda j's, lambda y's for different members. Now, once we have the lambda x and lambda y for different members and then uh, this, we substitute this lambda x and lambda y in this expression for every elements, for every members and calculate their uh, respective element stiffness, uh, member stiffness matrices. Let us do that. So, first take member number 1, member number 1 is between 2 to 1 and then this is the general expression for uh, stiffness matrix and if you substitute the lambda x and lambda y here, expression of k1, k1, please note that is k1, um, this k1, this k1 which is for uh, stiffness matrix for 1, uh, first element is this. So, similarly, we can calculate stiffness matrix for other elements, say take element member number 2, 
if we take member number 2 coming between 4 to 1 and corresponding lambda x lambda y this substitute those lambda x and lambda y here and we get k 2 as this length is 5 mm. E a we are keeping it as E a because E a is constant for all these members. Let's do this exercise for member 3 if we do this that for a member 3 member 3 is connecting between 3 3 and 4 and 3 and 4 corresponding lambda x lambda y substitute this we get this is k 3. Similarly, for member 4, uh, member 4 again we can get k 4 as this. Member 5, member 5 is this one the connection between 3 to 1 and corresponding angle is 45 degree and associated lambda x and lambda y are this substitute this and we get um, k 5 as this. And then similarly for k 6 uh, same exercise and k 6 will have this. So, now we have all these stiffness matrices or stiffness matrices for all the members and let us see all of these stiffness matrices together and these stiffness matrices are this ok. This is 6 members 6 stiffness matrices. Now, once we have those stiffness matrices for all members. Uh, then next is, is we have to assemble them and this is a very important part of uh, this assembling. As far as calculation of member stiffness matrix is pretty straightforward because you have the expression you have to substitute lambda x lambda y for that particular member. But the most important part here is assembling and there the how to how to numbering them and uh, all these things those issues will come. But for the given numbering, given way of numbering, let us see for this problem how this assembly needs to be done. We will not assemble the entire stiffness matrix. What we do is we take just one note and, uh, and discuss the assembling and then take the rest and then finally show the, I will show you final results. This assembling we have already discussed detail in the uh, previous, in the, in the previous examples that we discussed in the previous classes. Okay. So, um, let us let us consider this member number 1, uh, let us consider joint joint number 1 and see why wh how this assembling at this point we have. See at joint number 1 we have 3 uh, members member number 1, member number 2 and member number 5. So, uh, so, in the stiffness matrix the term associated with member number 1 in that term there will be contribution from second member number 2, member number 5 and member, member number 1. Let us uh, find out that contribution let us um, and uh, take the values uh, in the stiffness matrix for member number 1 uh, for joint number 1. So, these are the uh, 3 stiffness matrices member number 1 to 5 because only these members will contribute to joint 1. Now, you see we have 8 degrees of freedom. Uh, in this structure. So, global stiffness matrix will be 8 by 8 matrix. The first step is you take a global stiffness matrix and initialize them as 0. A we can keep outside because it is same uh, for all the problem. Now, uh, this is important. Um, so, these, these each row and each column. So, this is associated with ith uh, is first degrees of freedom, this is second, this is third. Similarly, this is for first, second, third. So, let us write this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, this what we are interested now is to uh, find out. So, these are if find out this contribution. So, just if I um, if I draw this just for the uh, now. So, this block will give you this block gives you what is the contribution from i from first node to the first node. This gives you what is the contribution from from first contribution at first node at first node from the uh, from this from the from the degrees of freedom uh, 3 4 and this gives you what is the contribution of second third node from uh, first node from third node. This gives you contribution at first node from the fourth node like this. Now, we will we will see what is the this block only we will concentrate on this block see the values of the, this block and rest of the blocks will just um, give you the final expression. Let us let us do that you see now uh, let us see term by term ok. Now, let us take first term this one. 
Now this one is uh, 1 1 right. Now 1 1 means we have 1 1 here you can keep it so that you can see this yes. We can have we have 1 1 here this is 1 1 term this is 1 1 term and then another 1 1 term we have we have 1 we have another 1 1 term here and then we have another another 1 1 term here. So, what we have to do is so 1 1 term will be this plus this plus this right and if you if you do that then this term will be first term will be this ok. Let us do this then 1 1 uh, let us do then 1 2 term this is 1 2 term 1 2 3 4 and so on 1 2 term ok 1 2 term is you see here you have 1 2 term is this one and then we have 1 2 term is this one and then we have 1 2 term is this one. So, this 1 2 term will be this plus this plus this and if you substitute this here these values will be this ok. Now, similarly let us see what is 2 2 1 term 2 1 term is this is this is 2 1 term this is 2 1 term and then this is 2 1 term and correspondingly this is 2 1 term and if we substitute add them and then substitute that then this corresponding value will be this and without actually doing this exercise you can straight away write 0 0.071 because the stiffness matrix is symmetric matrix but it is good to write calculate it and write it will be a check whether uh, whether you are getting this whether your calculations assembling is correct or not. Now, let us find out the first last one which is uh, 2 2 2 2 we have here we have 2 2 this is 2 2 and then this is 2 2 and similarly there also we have 2 2. Now, if we add them then final expression for 2 2 will be this this will be 2 2. So, similarly we can do this exercise for all these all the degrees of all the joints and all the degrees of freedom and if we do that your final stiffness of stiffness matrix will be like this ok. So, this is the first block we um, uh, we discussed only the first block here only this block we discuss how to get this block the rest of the things is if you apply the same thing. Now, this is again this block is contribution at node number 1 from node number 1 this is contribution at node number 1 from node number 2 contribution node number 1 from node number 3 contribution from node number 1 from code node number 4. Similarly, this block is continue contribution at node number 2 from node number 1 contribution at node number 2 from node number 2 contribution at node number 2 from node number 3 contribution of node number 2 from node number 4 and so on ok. Now, so this is our global stiffness matrix and you can say that this global stiffness matrix is symmetric. Now, you try to invert this global stiffness matrix as we say this global stiffness matrix is singular matrix the, the determinant of this matrix is 0 and its physical consequences because you have defined the structure, but we have not yet given the boundary condition. The boundary condition makes our structure stable. So, the mathematical consequence of this is your 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 singularity in the stiffness matrix and its physical manifestation is your structure is is not stable the structure is we have we have to structure does not have sufficient constraint now then we have to provide the constraint then what are the constraint we have in the uh, in the problem now the constraints are you look at the examples uh, these are the uh, look at the figure if we see then let us write down the constraints. We have uh, uh, say uh, u 4 is equal to 0, u 4 then u 5, u 6 all are 0, u 5 is equal to u 6 0 is equal to u 7 is equal to u 8 all u s are 0, these are 0. So, only non 0 u s will be u 1, u 2 and u 3. So, essentially you have to find out solution for u 1 u 2 u 3 rest other degrees of freedom u 4 to u 8 these are 0. So, these are constraint. So, this is for u similarly what information we have for load 1 suppose if this is p 1 this is p 2 load 1 means member load this is p 3 this is p 4 and then p 7 p 8 then p 5 and then p uh, p 6 p 6. 
see we don't know what is the uh, what is the what is the uh, what is p5 what is p6 because they are the rea they gives you the reaction at joints okay but looking at this point one can certainly say that result net resultant of the force here will be p1 will be 5 kilonewton and then p2 will be minus 10 kilonewton and then p3 is equal to uh, there is no p3 in this direction all other all other p7 p8 we cannot say because right now we cannot we cannot tell their value for that we need to find out the support reaction so they are essentially you have to find out at the end of the day so this is the information about the degrees of freedom we have and this is the information about the loads on the structure we have and that we have to use this information to get the solution okay now so, uh, based on this information, let us partition the stiffness matrix. This is where we partition the stiffness matrix. We take all these uh, known, known displacements and we separate it no, as known displacement and unknown displacement. And in this case, unknown displacements are um, u1, u2, u3 and u1, u2, u3 and the known displacement, all these displacements are 0. Okay? Now, we partition it like this. Okay? Now, so, once we have partitioned it, we can write the, uh, the force displacement relation as this. This is the global force displacement relation. This is the force is equal to, there will be an equality here. This force equal to the stiffness into displacement. Now, on the, among all these displacement, these displacements are not known. We need to find out these three displacement, but other displacement, these displacements are 0. Among all these, we can say that P1, just now we, we saw that P1 is equal to 5 kN, P2 is equal to minus 10 and P3 is equal to 0. So, what we do is we substitute those values in this load vector and the displacement vector. And if we do that, this will be our load displacement relation. Okay? Now, so what we do now is, so if we can take this part, so this part will be from this from this we can write so this part your this part will be this will be this will be is equal to this part this part multiplied by this part this part will not be there because this part multiplied by this zero is zero so this will be this multiplied by u1 u2 u3 and if we do that if we write it so we have so, this is this part, this part only written and rest of the part becomes 0 because these are all 0. Now, this gives us, now you invert, this is called reduced stiffness matrix. Reduced stiffness matrix after you apply the boundary condition constraint. As I just now said, if you take the determinant of global stiffness matrix, it comes 0. But now, if you take the determinant of, uh, of, of this reduced stiffness matrix, this is not 0. So, means your again your physical manifestation manifestation is this you have provided support to the structure so the structure is now um, stable and if you solve then you get an unique displacement field or unique solution now from this we can solve for u1 u2 u3 and if we solve it the solution will be this you can check with the solution um, there will be an e a term here which is missed now please correct it there will be uh, this will be this and there will be an a term here and this is equal to there will be an A E term here. Okay? So, the U1, U2, U3 displacement will be this. Okay? Now, <coughs> A E called actual rigidity. If you make A E more, your displacement will be less. It means that A E makes your structure more rigid. That is why it is called rigidity. Now, uh, once we have the displacement field, now you see all the displacements are known U1, U2, U3 and rest of the displacements are 0. Now, next we have to find out what are the um, what are the uh, what are the forces other unknown forces right now use the second part of this second part see we could say but by, by just looking at the structure you could say that p1 p2 p3 are 5 minus 10 and 0 respectively but we did not make any comment on p4 p5 p6 and so on now we have to evaluate them we can evaluate them by this block you see this this will be again this expression this will be this will be this part multiplied by this part plus this part this part 
multiplied by this part, but since it is 0, this part contribution will be 0 essentially. So, essentially you have this will be this multiplied by this and this is written here. Okay. Now, u 1, u 2, u 3 already we have the expression here will be an a e term here. u uh, 1, u 2, u 3 already we have the expression and if we substitute them we can solve for p p 4, p 5, p 6, p 7 and p 8 and if you do that our solution will be this will be our solution you can verify the solution. Okay. So, this is all these p's okay, joint forces and from that you can easily determine what are the reactions. Now, once we have determined what are the reactions these p 4, p 5 these forces will give you the reactions and then we have also determined what are the displacements next one next thing is left is, is your uh, what are the member forces. Let us find out what are the member forces. Now, if you recall our expression for member forces uh, we will just give demonstrate that with one, one member and rest of the thing is same thing you can again apply. Take member number 1. Uh, if you recall the expression for member forces is this if p 1 dash is the force in member 1 then these is the expression okay? and u 3, u 4, u 1, u 2 are the associated degrees of freedom. Out of that we have already we have already we already know that uh, what are the expression u 4 is equal to 0 we already know and uh, rest u 1, u 2, u 3 we have already determined lambda x lambda y for member number 1 is given here. If you substitute all these values here. Uh, and solve for p 1 dash and p 1 dash uh, p 1 u 2 is given here u 4 is equal to 0 and if we get it p 1 dash will be minus 3.8 kilo newton you can check that. So, you can apply the same thing for all the members we know lambda x lambda y we just have to substitute lambda x lambda y values here and then associated degrees of freedom and if we do that for all the members then the finally the member forces for all the members will be this. Okay. Now, you can check your solution, check whether your equilibriums are satisfied or not, whether the forces are correct, they are compatible, your support reactions are forces, they satisfy the equilibrium and those cross checks you can do. Now, this is a, a summary of the entire methods, but that is through an example. Okay? Now, same thing you can apply for any method, since we have to uh, we have to uh, we have to show all these stiffness matrices in a single screen uh, calculate all the forces therefore the problem that we chose in both the problem the first one and the, this one the your number of number of uh, the the unknowns or degrees of freedoms are less uh, so that we can solve it uh, here without using any computer but you know in actual structure you don't have just four joints you have say hundreds of joints, um, hundreds of members, uh, your degree, your stiffness matrices that you come, come across that is a, in, in terms of several thousands by several thousands. Uh, but, uh, so in order to solve them we have to use uh, any, any computational tool, but the essence of that computational tool, the algorithm that, uh, uh, the, the algorithm which constitute the solver is this, the exactly the same procedure, but in a larger scale in a where your number of members are more, see if the dimensions are more, but the steps are concerned they are exactly the same that we have discussed in this week. We have to, we have to, we have to number the first, we have to number the uh, members, number the joints, number the degrees of freedom and then write the stiffness matrices for each member and based on their numbering assemble them and then once you have the as once you assemble them get the global stiffness matrix apply the boundary conditions reduce stiffness matrix solve for unknown displacements once you know the unknown displacements and uh, then you calculate the unknown forces uh, unknown joint forces and once you have both then we can apply we can find out the member forces right so this is uh, the matrix method of structural analysis for truss uh, there are some issues, the implementation issues just as I said how to give these numberings and what is the most efficient way of numbering uh, for a large uh, structure, those things we will discuss, those issues, implementation issues we will discuss at the seventh week before we, before we demonstrate this method uh, for other, uh, other, other structural idealization and other structural idealization that we consider in this course is beams and frames. So, trust 
we have completed in this week. Next class, next week, we will discuss the matrix method of structural analysis for beams. Okay? So, I stop here today. See you in the next class. Thank you.